한국에 기독교가 들어와서 큰 부흥운동을 일으키게 된그 계기가 1900년도 초반에 일어났습니다. And so, um, I guess when gospel came to Korea, there, there are a few great um, turning points for the revival of, of Christianity in Korea. And I guess if you could break down uh, two key turning points the revival of Christianity in Korea, I think I, I, I could say there's definitely two. 어, 첫 번째는 1903년에 원산에서 어, 기도 운동이 일어났습니다. One of the famous ones were the it, it was in 1903 and they called it the Wonsan Movement. 그날 8월 달에 이 성교사들하고 많은 성도들이 모여가지고 흑암에 붙잡힌 이 나라에 복음의 꽃이 피게 해 주옵소서 하는 제목을 가지고 기도회를 열었습니다. And um, it was a, a prayer conference or a meeting, but uh, there were missionaries and then there were church members, and I guess the the theme of that prayer meeting was like let's uh, let the gospel bloom um, in the nation that's bound in darkness. 그때 강사로서 로버트 로봇 로봇 하디라는 그 선교사님이 예, 강의를 하게 됐습니다. And one of the speakers or the messengers that was at that place was a missionary called Robert Hardy. 아, 그분은 캐나다 토론토 대학교 의사 아, 출신입니다. And he was a doctor for the the University of Toronto. 그님이 그분이 이제 이 강단에 올라서 가지고 어 말씀을 증거하는데 말씀 증거는 내그 어, 도정마다 계속 울면서 어, 자신의 죄를 고백하고 고백을 하고 있었어요. And what was strange about this uh, or interesting, so to speak, is that as this missionary was giving the message, the content of the message was of all the wrong things that he he was confessing his sins. He of all the wrong things that he was done. 자신의 흐르는 눈물을 자신도 참지 못하면서 계속 울어가면서 이 자기의 그 죄를 고백했다고. And he was crying the whole time because you know he was really confessing. Of all the sins that he has committed. 나는 의사로서 엘리트 의식을 가지고 이 조선 사람들, 한국 사람들 이렇게 대했습니다. And so you know, um, I'm, a, I'm a doctor, and I have this uh, elitism that I feel like I'm better than everybody else, better than Korea. 나는 한국 사람들 볼 때마다 이렇게 교만함에 가득 차 가지고 이렇게 말씀을 증거했습니다. And he was saying in this word, you know, I felt that I was better. That I was arrogant. Why? Because I felt like I was better than a Korean person. 너무나 형편없이 보이는 이 가난한 이 백성들 보면서 자기는 백인으로서의 우월감을 가지고 이렇게 사람들을 상대했었습니다. And he felt like you know uh, he felt this um, the 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 white superiority because he was a rich person and he was in a poor Asian country. He felt that he was this arrogant. 그는 하나님 앞에 회개하면서 막 고백을 하면서 눈물바다를 이루기 시작했습니다. And then he confessed. He repented before God. 그 소리를 들은 많은 성도들은 함께 이렇게 눈물을 흘렸습니다. And a lot of the people that heard this message that they were also crying too. 거기 참여했던 많은 성교사님도 나도 그랬습니다. 나도 그랬습니다 하면서 막 같이 동참하면서 눈물을 흘리기 시작했습니다. And a lot of missionaries were crying with him of all the sins that the wrong things that they were doing too. 그 장소는 완전히 불덩이가 돼 버렸었습니다. And um, it was just became a, a sea of tears because everybody was crying. 이 원산에서 이 기도회를 통해서 전 지역에 이 부흥 운동이 일어나기 시작했습니다. And because of that uh, conference, so to speak, the retreat that of o n s a n movement, it definitely set a huge mood for a revival around that region. 하나님께서는 그를 끝내지 않냐고 1907년도에 평양 장대원 교회에서 하나님께서는 다시 And continuing on, it was a chain effect from there in 1903. God continued to do the continued revival movement in 1907 uh, in the Pyongyang region. 그때 그 말씀의 증거로 나오신 분이 당시 아주 유명했던 길선주 장로님이 나와서 어, 말씀을 증거하겠습니다. Within the second revival uh, turning point, so to speak, um, the messenger was actually an elder, uh, elder Kim Sungju. Those that was there. 그 길선주 장로님께서 교인들 앞에서 말씀 증가다 말고 자기의 죄를 고백하기 시작했습니다. It's kind of like the same thing where the conference kind of led to where he was confessing 
he sent in front of the people. 2년 전에 세상을 떠난 자기 친구의 유산을 자기가 정리했었습니다. His one of his confession was where his friend passed away. 내 순간적으로 유산을 정리하다 보니까 그 재물이 탐이 탐이 나가지고 당시 백 달러에 해당되는 그 돈을 엄청난 그때 큰 돈이었는데 그 돈을 자기가 훔쳤습니다. And for him, his story was that his friend died. He was sorting out his inheritance, and he found a hundred dollars worth. So counting inflation, the hundred dollars was extremely large amount of money, which he took for himself. 그렇게 인격이 참 훌륭했던 그 장로님이 눈물로서 그 고백을 했던 거예요. And it was his personal story, but the point was is that he was repenting of his sins that he was committed. 성령께서 역사에 시작했습니다. But the repentance that he did would cause the Holy Spirit to, to work. 그분이 회개할 회개를 통해서 온 교회 교인들이 다 같이 나도 그랬습니다, 나도 그랬습니다 하면서 회개하기 시작했어요. And same thing. It was a chain effect of because of one person repented of the sin that a lot of people, the Holy Spirit worked, and a lot of people within that church members also were repenting of all the wrongdoing that they're doing. 나는 노름 노름하는 노름쟁이입니다. You know, oh, I, I, I gamble a lot. 나는 아내를 학대했습니다. Or I was abusive to my wife. 나는 가는 데 있었습니다. Or I was um, extorting. 나는 시기하고 질투하는 데 있었습니다. Or I'm a jealous or envious person. 나는 도둑질했습니다. 아무튼 나와서 막 자기 죄를 고백하기 시작. Or I, I steal. Whatever. There, were, there were a lot of repentance and confession that was happening at that time. 성령께서 강하게 역사 시작했어요. The Holy Spirit worked because of this. 이분들은 전부 다 그런 모였던 모든 사람들이 가슴을 치면서. And for them, they were hitting their chest and they were repenting before God. 이 죄를 어찌했으면 좋을지 너무나 애통해 가지고 어쩔 줄 몰라 그냥 그냥 그 안타까운 그런 마음으로 바닥을 굴기 시작했어요. And for them, the sins that they committed, they were so, uh, you know, ter terrified or not terrified. They were so they, they were so um, frustrated by the sins that they've committed and they're repenting. 막 땅바닥을 치기도 하고. 또는 막 바닥에 떼굴떼굴 굴러가면서 막 회개를 하기 시작했어요. Or, or anguish. So they were so anguished about their sins that they committed. They were hitting themselves or you know hitting their chest, you know hitting the ground, whatever. That's what they were doing. 성령이 강하게 거의 모든 모든 성도들 한 사람도 빠지 않고 전부 다 성령이 강하게 역사했던 것이죠. The Holy Spirit worked greatly uh, in that second revival movement. 나중에 그 광경을 보고 있었던 사람의 이야기를 이것은 마치 초대교회 때. 마가 다락방에 있었던 어떤 그 회개의 역사가 똑같이 일어난다 하면서 그렇게 얘기를 했던 거예요. And one of the observations that people brought up during these these uh, during that prayer event, where they said this is probably the same movement that took place, working of the Holy Spirit in Mark's upper room. 한국 기독교가 거듭나는 그 놀라운 순간이 일어났던 거죠. And that was the moment when um, Korean Christianity is reborn, you can say. 이 불길은 이 성령의 불길은 천국에 불타오르기 시작했어요. And the fire of the Holy Spirit that took place clearly spread across the entire nation. 이 천국에 살고 있는 모든 기, 기독교인들이 회개 운동이 일어나기 시작했던 거예요. A lot of um, repentance movement really started from these two major, major events. 가슴을 치면서 죄를 회개하면서 하나님 앞에 구하면서 물을 부수기 시작했던 거예요. And you know they were crying because of the sins that they were committing. They were repenting of their sins and the and and the wrong things that they were doing before God. 하나님께서는 이 한국 땅을 축복해 주셔야했던 거예요. And because of this, that God blessed Korea. 참 놀라운 현상입니다. And that's the important thing. 저는 그걸 보면서 야 회개라는 것이 참으로 너무나 중요한 거로구나 하는 것을 제가 깨달았어요. The point being is that there is an importance of repentance. 개인이든 가정이든 교회든. 회개 운동이 일어나게 될때그 가정이 살고 교회가 살고 나라가 사는 거예요. If you want to save yourself, save your family and to save the church without repentance, this is impossible. 새로운 놀라운 역사가 어디서부터 시작되느냐? 회개에서 시작되는 것을 볼 수가 있습니다. If you want works to take place, how, how, where and how does it all begin? It all begins with repentance. 거기서 성령이 큰 게. 역사하는 것을 우리가 어느 곳에나 이렇게 발견할 수가 있어요. And you can confirm that if you have correct repentance, then you can truly see the working of the Holy Spirit takes place. 그러면 여기서 어떻게 해서 우리가 그그 회개 운동을 통해서 하나님께서 기뻐하시고 역사를 하시는가 하는 것을 우리가 말씀을 통해서 우리가 다시 한번 찾아봐야 되겠습니다. So breaking down repentance, what is it? How is it done? Within the message today, we will look at what. Repentance is. 오늘 일절 말씀 보게 되면은 
크게 외치라 목소리를 아끼지 말라 네 목소리를 나팔같이 높여 내 백성에게 그들의 허물을 야곱의 집에 그들의 죄를 알리라 하고 말씀하고 있어요 Cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like the trumpet Tell my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins 여기 말씀에 크게 외치라 목소리 아끼지 말라 하면서 이, 이 하나님께서 이사야 선자를 통해서 신껏 외치라고 지금 말씀하고 있습니다. And that's how the scripture begins in Isaiah 51 is to cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like the trumpet. 왜 그렇습니까? Why is God saying this? 하나님께서 이 지금 약속하시기를 죄에 대한 진노, 너희들에 대한 진노가 이제 밖에서 부모를 해결할 수 있는 방법을 우리에게 주셨다는 사실을 알리라 하는 말씀이란 말이에요. What God is trying to say is that there is a way to come out of the wrath of God. So tell people loudly of how to do this. 이 여호와께서 우리 모두의 죄악을 그리스도에게 담당시키겠다는 이 사실을 알려라 하는 말씀이란 말이에요. To tell people to come out of the wrath of God, and the only way to come out of the wrath of God is to Christ. 왜 그렇습니까? 지난 시간 봤습니다만은 57장 마지막 절 보게 되면. 내 하나님의 말씀에 악인에게는 평강이 없다 하셨느니라 하고 말씀하고 있어요. Why is this important? Because in last week's message, Isaiah 57:21, it says there is no peace for the wicked. 너희들 항상 진노 가운데서 고통받고 어려움 당하고 힘들게 살고 있지 않느냐? 그 문제를 해결할 수 있는 방법이 있다. 그러니까 너희들 그 방법을 지금 갖춘다. 빨리 외치라 말이야. What God is telling you is this: Your life is in chaos. Your life, your life is in wrath, and you have no peace in your life. God is saying there's a solution to this problem, and God is telling you to shout out the solution to this problem. 그들은 정확한 내용을 말씀하고 있어요. 그들의 허물을 야곱의 집에 그들의 죄를 알리라 하고 말씀하고 있어요. To tell the people, tell my people their transgression and the house of Jacob. Their sins. 그 죄를 알리라, 죄를 깨닫게 해라 하는지 말씀이라. To realize what that sin is, to to tell people what that sin is. 여러분 이 대단히 중요한 말씀입니다. And that part is extremely important. 예수님께서 이 땅에 오셔서 제일 처음 하신 말씀이 바로 뭐냐? 마태복음 4장 17절 말씀 보게 되면 회개하라, 천국이 가까웠느니라 하고 주님께서도 제일 먼저 하신 말씀이. This is important because if you remember the first thing that Jesus Christ has said in Matthew 4:17, the first thing that he said, "Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand." 그럼 회의라는 말이 뭐냐는 거 우리가 먼저 알고 시, 얘기 계속해야 되겠죠. And then I think you have to correctly understand the word and the definition of repentance, or in this case, repent. 이 회의라는 말은 헬라 말로 메타노야라는말이라고 합니다. The word repentance, Greek. Is meta noel. 이거는 후에 깨닫는다 하는 그런 의미를 가지고 있어요. There's a couple meanings. The the first meaning that comes in 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 this definition is to realize later. To realize later. 또 시브리 말 시브리 말로는 수브라고 합니다. 바로 돌아온다 하는 그 의미를 가지고 있어요. And then there's also in Greek, uh, and, and 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 it says turning back is the other word. 이거 회개는 뭐냐니까 깨닫고. 삶을 방향을 바꿔서 돌아오는 걸 나타내고 있는 거라 And so there's two different meanings here to realize later and also to realize and to turn back. That's the definition of repentance. 지금까지 살았던 방향을 바꿔 가지고 완전히 삶의 변화를 시키는 인생 전환을 시키는 방향 전환을 시키는 바로 그 그것이 바로 회개라는 거. Repentance in our simple term is to realize what you're doing wrong and then to change Your direction within your life. 그러면 여기는 우리서 회개가 언제부터 정확하게 시작되는지 하는 것을 우리가 한번 점검해 봐야 되겠죠. And that's the turning point in your life. So let's talk about the origin. How did the repentance? What was the origin of repentance? 우리가 회를 회개를 정확하게 우리가 알수 있는 것은 구약에 나타나는 그피 제사에서부터 그것을 찾아볼 수가 있어요. You really understand the origin of repentance within the Old Testament by the blood sacrifice. 이 성경을 보게 되면은 아 내가 죄를 지었구나 하고 깨달은 자는 제사장 앞에 짐승을 가지고 가 가지고 짐승 머리다 안수합니다. Within the Old Testament, what did they do? When they realized the sins that they committed, they go to a priest and they bring an animal. 
and confess their sins and they bring an animal to the priest. 그 안수해서 뭘 하느냐? 자기 죄를 모든 걸다 제상 앞에서 고백하는 거예요. And what does the priest do? What the priest does is that here's your sin and I'm going to lay lay my hands on the animal and I'm going to give your sin to this animal. 그내 모든 죄를 이제 제상 그 안수해서 거기 집어넣었으니까 제사장은 그 짐승을 죽여 가지고 피를 내 피를 내 가지고 뿌리고 몸은 다 불태워버리는 거예요. What the priest does is the priest takes your sin, transfers it to the animal to sacrifice it, and then you you sacrifice the animal and then you you burn the animal sacrifice. 그러면 내 죄가 용서 안 받게 되고 대신 이제 완전히 불태워 없어지니까 내 죄가 없어지게 되는 거란 말이야. Because your sins have been transferred to the animal, and the animal dies, and the blood sacrifice, you are for, you, you repented, and then your sins are forgiven. That is the whole part of repentance. 우리가 우리의 가진 죄를 해결하기 위해서는 이 방법 외에는 절대로 없다는 거예요. That process has to take place. If you want your sins to be forgiven, you have to do that exact thing. 내내 죄를 내죄 하나 때문에 귀한 짐승 너무나 귀한 그 양소 같은 걸 얼마나 줬습니까? 그그 짐승을 이, 하, 잡아가지고 한 마리 생명을 죽이는 거예요. So that's what you have to do. Imagine in the Old Testament that that every time you sin, you have to get this animal. Very expensive, right? So you, every time you sin, you have to take this animal and then you have to give it, have your sins forgiven every time. 그러니까 얼마나 무서운 거한 것을 우리가 다시 한번 붙잡아야 돼요. Because you begin to realize just how terrible sin can be. 내가 죄 한번 딱 졌는데 그것 때문에 짐승이 생명이 생명을 거두 안 되니까 다 태우고 없어 버렸으니까. Because of one wrong thing that you've done, one sin that you have to do, the the horrific part of it is not, you know, an animal. Something has to die. An animal has to die because of the wrong thing that you have done every time. 바로 이것이 회개 의미예요. And that is the 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 meaning of repentance. 그런데 중요한 것은 이 희생 제물이 양이나 소가 아니라 이제 예수 그리스도로 바뀌게 된 거예요. The change happens that this sacrifice that you have to give every time of your sin instead of being an animal has now become Jesus Christ. 그래서 시비에서 구장 12절 말씀 보게 되면은 염소와 송아지의 피로 하지 아니하고 오직 자기의 피로 영원한 속죄를 이루사 단번에 송세에 들어가셨느니라. Hebrews 9:12 Not with the blood of goats and cows but with his own blood he entered the most holy place once and for all. 아, 구약 시대에는 이렇게 그, 그 짐승이 있어 가지고 모든 죄를 전가시켜 가지고 그 전가 그 죽이면 우리 문제 해결되는데 이제는 우리에게 희생 제물이 없단 말이에요. So once again the, what has to take place like in the Old Testament is that you have a sin you have to impute your sins to the animal for your sins to be forgiven. Within the New Testament not with the animal but we don't do that anymore here. 근데 오늘 말씀 보니까 우리에게 필요한 희생 제물이 지금 어디 있느냐? 하늘 성소에가 있다고 얘기하고. We don't need an animal. However, we still need a sacrifice. The sacrifice in here in the Bible who is right now has entered the most high, most holy place. 안도라 사건이죠. So there's a very interesting amazing transition that's happening. 우리 희생 제물 걱정 안 해도 되는 거예요. So the thing that you don't have to worry about is you don't have to worry about getting an animal and you don't have to worry about sacrificing an animal every time you do something wrong. 히브리서 8장 1절 말씀 보게 되면은 지금 우리가 말할 요점은 또 이러한 대제사장이 우리에게 있다 하는 것이라 그는 하늘에서 지극히 크신 이의 보좌 우편에 앉으신다. 말씀하고 있습니다. Hebrews 8:1. Now this is the main point of the things we're saying. We have such a high priest who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. So once again, what are the parts you need? You need a priest and you need a sacrifice. But in here, but for us, so to speak, that there is no priest in a physical form around us. But where is the priest that we need? Well, in the scripture, it says this, the, the true priest is sitting at the right hand of, in the throne of God. 그리고 우리에게는 우리 속죄를 위한 완벽한 제물이 있고 완벽한 제사장이 지금 다 살아계시단 말이야 지금 이렇게. So the two important point once again for the repentance, what do you need? What you need a priest and you need a true sacrifice, which both of those things still exist in the right hand of God. 근데 우리 회개할 때는 뭐냐면은 우리 제물 대신 예수님 앞에 모든 걸 전가시키고 
또 회개할 때는 제사장 앞에서 또 한단 말이에요. So, 이것이 왜 그런 말이야? The two parts that you need once again for your repentance, you need a priest to confess your sins and you need a sacrifice for your sins to be imputed, meaning transferred to which Jesus Christ is both of those that is still alive and sitting in the right hand of God. 그래서 이사야 1장 18절 말씀 보게 되면은 여호와께서 말씀하시되 오라 우리가 서로 변론하자 너희 죄가 주온 같을지라도 눈과 같이 휘어질 것이요 진온 같이 붉을지라도 양털까지 시게 되리라 말씀하고 있어요. So if you do this, if you do the true repentance, what is the result? In Isaiah 118, come now, let us reason together. Uh, says the Lord, through your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow, for they are like red crimson, they, are, they, are, they shall be as wool. 구역 시대 이 짐승의 재물을 가지고 재산 앞에서 회개함으로써 깨끗하게 이렇게 해결됐다는 것을 나타내고 있단 말이에요. What's the result? Well, let's use the Old Testament example. When you have your sins, confess your sin, have the priest transfer the sins to the animal sacrifice, you are as white as snow. That is a result of your repentance. 우리의 영원한 참 대상 되시고 참 희생제물 대신 그리스도께서 하늘에서 계셔가지고 모든 걸다 소화하고 계시는 거예요. For us now, Jesus Christ, who is the true sacrifice, Jesus Christ, who is the true priest, that we are able to be true Uh, as white as snow, because we have the repentance of these two important things in mind. 지금도 하나님 보좌 우편에 계신 우리 주님께서 우리 죄 문제를 완벽하게 해결하고 계시다는 것을 나타내고 있는 겁니다. The point being is that Jesus Christ, who is able to, who we are able to repent ourselves before Jesus Christ, who is sitting at the right hand of God, because He is these two things. 그럼 우리가 생각해 보겠 그러면 회개는 어떤 종류가 있는가 하는 것을 우리가 알아봐야 되겠죠. So now you understand where repentance came from and where repentance is now. Then the question you you ask yourself is, well, when there's repentance, like what what, what kind of what type of repentance are there? 회개는 두 가지 종류예요. And it's really you could break it down to two major. 구원에 이르는 회개와 성화에 이르는 회개 두 가지가 있는 걸 우리가 잡아야 돼. There's a repentance for salvation, a repentance leading to salvation, and then there's also repentance leading to sanctification. 사정의 11장 18절 말씀 보게 되면은 이방인 고넬료가 복음을 듣고 회개하는 내용이 나타나고 있습니다. In Acts 11:18 this is a story about the uh, the repentance when it comes to a gentile uh, a, a, a gentile confessing their way to salvation. 그 이야기를 들은 그이 사도들이 한 이야기가 18절에 나타나고 있는 거예요. And the content of that in verse 18. 그들이 이 말을 듣고 잠잠하여 하나님께 영광을 돌려 이르되 그러면 하나님께서 이방인에게도 생명 얻는 회개를 주셨도다 하니라 하고 말씀하고 있어요. When they heard these things, they became silent and glorified God, saying that the God has also granted the Gentiles repentance to life. 이 고넬료 집안에 베드로가 복음을 전한데 엄청난 성령의 역사가 나타났다. What's very important here is here's Peter uh, testifying the gospel to a Gentile. An amazing life moment took place. Peter gave the gospel to a Gentile. Peter gave the gospel to a Gentile. Cornelius 집안 모든 모였던 모든 식구들이 그 말씀을 듣는 순간에 깨달음이 오기 시작한 거예요. When the word of God was spreading to the house of Cornelius, an important uh, thing is that all the people within the household began to realize and were able to listen to the word of God. Ah, 이거 잘못했구나. 내가 잘못했구나 하는 거. Now, what was the transition? When they heard the word of God, they realized what they were doing, meaning that they were repenting of their sins because of the word of God. And what happened? Because they confessed, they repented of the sins that they were doing, and they accepted Jesus Christ. Life movement, the repentance led to their salvation. And everyone within the house of Cornelius received salvation. 여러분도 이 시간에 성령 충만 받는 여러분 되시기 바랍니다. And the important thing that happens is that you were all they were all filled with the Holy Spirit just like you were when you accepted. 중요한 일이 사도행전 2장 38절에 나타나고 있습니다. And the also important part in Acts 2:38. 베드로가 이르되 너희가 회개하여 각각 예수 그리스도 이름으로 세례를 받고 죄상을 받으라 그리하면 성령의 선물을 받을 것이라고 말씀하고 있어요. Then Peter said to them, repent. And let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Notice how Peter gives this exact specific order. 먼저 회개하여 하고부터 시작되는 거예요. Peter said, "Repent." 
우리가 말씀을 듣자마자 아 내가 잘못했구나 내가 하나님 앞에 범죄했구나 아 이거 잘못된 신앙생활을 했구나 하는 걸 깨닫게 되는 거란 말이에요. When it becomes repenting, the very very important part is awareness. Oh. I have committed a sin. I am doing something wrong here, and I need to go back before God. You need to have that in order to repent before God. 각각 예수 그리스도 이름으로 세례를 받고 받았다고 얘기하세요. And then the second point that he makes is, let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. 말씀을 깨닫는 것이 바로 아 예수님이 바로 그리스도였구나 하는 걸 깨닫는 거예요. The first thing is when you repent, you realize what you're doing, and you realize that Jesus Christ. Is the only solution to the sins that you have committed. Jesus Christ, so our sin is only one that is forgiven. The sin is forgiven. The sin is forgiven. The sin is forgiven. What you begin to realize that Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is the Christ who broke down the power of Satan, who broke down the sins, and who also showed us the way to meet God. Ah, Jesus, I'm now your true and true Savior. So now I will accept Jesus Christ into my heart. 그러게 하는 순간에 죄의 삶을 받는 놀라운 역사가 나타나는 거예요. Then if you do this, then you have the remissions of sin. 이때 성령의 인침력, 성령의 불처럼 입에서 그 머리에 임하게 되는 걸볼 수가 있어요. And lastly, what happens if you do the remission of sins, except Jesus Christ, that you you shall receive the gift, which is the Holy Spirit. 그리하면 성령의 선물을 받을 것이라고 얘기했어요. It says you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. 여러분 우리가 그것을 우리가 모시고 우리 모든 흑암이 무너지는 흑암이 이렇게 제거되는 그런 그 순간에. 성령의 놀라운, 놀라운 역사가 그 안에 채우게 돼 있습니다. So what happens when you accept Jesus Christ? The darkness that sits within your life goes away. And what happens when the darkness goes away in your life and Jesus Christ is with you? The thing that God gives you after that is the Holy Spirit. 그동안 사로잡았던 흑암이 무너지고 주의 성령께서 내 자리에 주인으로 들어오신다 말이야. What that means is that you're no longer surrounded by and captured by the darkness of your life. Now you are. Now you have what you call a Holy Spirit that is with you all the time. 그런데 회개는 이뿐만 성령의 예, 성화에 이르는 또 회개가 또 있단 말이에요. That's the first type of repentance. Now we have a second type of repentance, which you call a repentance leading to sanctification. 이것이 대단히, 대단히 중요한 말씀입니다. Now this part is what you do, and this is the very important part of your Christianity. 지금 우리가 은혜 받는 도구가 바로 뭐냐? 요걸 우리가 잘 붙잡아야 되는 거예요. And so, in order for you to receive correct grace, I think you have to truly and really understand this process of sanctification. 레위기 4장 33절 말씀 보게 되면은 그 속죄제 제물의 머리에 안수하고 번제물을 잡는 곳에서 속죄 제물로 잡을 것이라 하고 말씀하고 있어요. Beginning with Leviticus 4:33, uh, it says he laid his hand upon the head of the sin offering and killed it for sin offering in the place where they killed the burnt offering. 요건 지금 속죄제 제사를 지금 얘기를 하고 있는 거예요. So this is talking about sin offering. 여러분 레위기서 보면은 이 이스라엘 백성들 했던 다섯 가지 제사 제도에 대해서 나, 나타나고 있습니다. So you can there's there's in, in Leviticus you can see there are five types of sacrifices. 번제, 소제, 화목제, 속제제, 속번제 다섯 가지 제사를 이 사람들이 드렸어요. The five sacrifices they give was burnt offering, grain offering, peace offering, sin offering, and trespass offering. 이 사람들이 드렸던 제자는 구원을 받기 위해서 제사를 드린 것이 아니었어요. Meaning that there was more than just giving burnt sacrifice for their salvation. There were other sacrifices in this case for something else. 출애굽을 해 와서 그러니까 어린 양으로 구원을 받아서 출애굽을 해온 이스라엘 백성들에게 하나님께서 지혜, 행하라고 하신 제사 제도가 이 다섯 가지 제사, 제사 제도란 말이에요. Because if you really think about it. The Israelites receive salvation when they put the blood of the young lamb on the doorpost. That is their salvation. But yet, they're in wilderness, and they're giving five other types of offering, meaning that there is something else beyond the salvation. 너희들이 신앙생활하다가 너희들이 살다가 혹시 해당되는 죄를 범하게 되면은 제물을 가지고 와서 나한테 속죄 제물을 드려라. 그럼 내가 죄를 So what God was telling Israelites, you have received salvation, but there are still you will still sin, you will still commit your sins. So what God wanted us to do is give these five types of offering or sacrifices to God for every sins that they have committed in the wilderness. 그러니까 이 사람들이 죄를 짓 때마다 가서 그 제물 드린다는 것은 뭐냐면 날마다 자기 죄를 씻어가는 게 성화를 위해서 
점점 죄를 씻어가는 그런 삶을 살기 위해서 이렇게 행하실 변경하신 거란 말이에요. The whole purpose for this is to sanctify themselves. So they will need to give this sacrifice almost every day, really, if you think about it, to, to continue to sanctify themselves, and they will have to continue to give these sacrifices to God. 하나님께서는 왜 이렇게 시켰냐? 우리 인간의 있던 창세기 3장, 6장, 11장, 다시 말씀드리면 각인 내리고 각인되고 뿌리 내리고 체질됐던 이 체, 체, 체질을 제사를 통해서 해결해 가면서 점점 거룩한 삶을 살아가야 된다 하는 것을 말씀하고 있는 거예요. Now, the question is why? Why would God make the Israelites go through so many sacrifices, so many of these things that's in the wilderness? It's simple because you have your nature, you have your, you have your stubborn, uh, deeply rooted thing within your life, and God wanted to change this nature and deeply rooted, implanted things within your life. 어떤 다른 나라 백성들은 이거 갖지 못했어요. 오직 이스라엘 백성들만 가졌던 특권이에요. And no matter where you look in the Bible, only the Israelites were in the wilderness, and only the Israelites within the wilderness were given these blood sacrifices every single day. 다시 말씀드리면 회개라는 것은 하나님의 백성들에게만 주시는 하나님의 크신 은혜요 축복이라는 것을 우리가 붙잡아야 됩니다. This is important. Why? Because we're talking about repentance. Only those that are that have that receive the grace from God, that are chosen people of God, only they know what a repentance is, and only they are able to give repent to God for sanctification. 에베소 1장 4절 말씀 보게 되면은 곧 창세전에 그리스도 안에서 우리를 택하사 우리로 사랑 안에서 그 앞에 거룩하고 흠이 없게 하시려고 라고 말씀하고 있어요. Ephesians 1, uh, Ephesians 1, 4, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we may we should be holy without blame before him in love. 우리를 택해가지고 그냥 하나님 자녀 삼으신 것이 아니라 그리스의 사랑 안에서 거룩하고 흠없게 하시는, 하시는 것이 하나님의 계획이었다는 것을 말씀하고 있단 말이에요. There's two points that you have to understand that God has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, meaning that God has chosen you to receive salvation. And that you should be holy and without blame before Him. What is that? That means it is a repentance. That means God wants you to be sanctified throughout your life. So that's two-part plan, where God's not just going to save you and leave you. God wants to save you. And the second part of the goal is to sanctify you after you have received your salvation. 성화 어떻게 하느냐? 성화는 회개를 통해서 이루어지는 거예요. And the question that you ask yourself is, okay, you keep on saying to to receive sanctification. How do you receive sanctification? Simple. The beginning of sanctification is repentance. 사도 바울은 얘기합니다. 고린도후서 4장 10절 보게 되면 그러므로 우리가 낙심하지 아니하노니 우리의 겉 사람은 낡아지나 우리의 속 사람은 날로 새로워지도다. 말씀하고 있어요. Second Corinthians 4:16. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though uh, our, our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man has been renewed. Day by day. 다시 말씀드리면 우리의 신앙생활 할수록 정상적인 신앙생활은 갈라데서 2장 2절이 돼 가는 거예요. And so really uh, you know you can live your Christian life which is fine but to say to live a correct Christian life that's when you have to have Galatians 2:20. 이 우리가 마지막 또 하나 봐야 될 것은 이 회개의 축복이 무엇인가 한 거를 붙잡아야 되죠. Then you ask yourself okay so let's say that we repent Sanctification, salvation. Let's say that we do this. Then, what do we get? What What is our blessings from all of this? 오늘 이절 말씀 보게 되면은 그들이 날마다 나를 찾아 나의 길 알기를 즐거함이 마치 공의를 행하여 거의 하나님 규례를 저버리지 아니하는 나라 같아서 의로운 판단을 내게 구하며 내가 가까이 하기를 즐거한다 하면서 말하고 있습니다. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways, and as a nation did righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of God, they ask me in the ordinance of justice to take the delight in the approaching God. 이 말씀 보게 되면은 마치 뭐 이렇게 에, 그 말하고 있는 걸 보면 이것이 진짜가 아니라는 걸 나타내고 있는 거란 말이에요. And so the context of verse two to three is is if if you try to understand the context is that they were faking it. It, it wasn't what they were doing. Their actions wasn't real. 이 바리새인들의 모습을 나타내고 있는 거예요. And so this is like a fraud, like like a, a suspicious behavior that these people were making. 그 사람들은 마치 그뭐 기도도 하고 뭐 규례를 잘 지키는 것 같고 뭐 그런 것처럼 다 거룩하게 지내고 있는데 사실은 가짜라는 거죠. And so what does that mean? Meaning that these people pray. They 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 pretend to pray before, or they say they're praying, or they they say that they're doing these amazing things before God, but they're fraud. 
you know, they, they don't truly mean what they do. Meaning that they're too perfect in their eyes. And as a matter of fact, they don't see the need to repent for the things that they've done wrong. 제 개인적인 이야기를 한번 한번 잠깐 드리겠습니다. And so I'll give you a, a personal example. 제가 그이 목회 길로 들어지기 전에 교회를 다니면서도 회개라는 걸 몰랐었어요. And so uh, for me, uh, I guess before I became a pastor when I went to church, it was really difficult for me to repent before God. 그래서 그래서 이제 새벽 기도 갔다 말이에요. And there was a time where I went to early morning uh, Sunday service or early morning uh, prayer uh, worship. 아이 눈을 감고 이제 새벽 기도 가서 기도하는데 내 앞에 딱 나타나는 것이 내 몸이 딱 나타나는데 투명된 몸이 나타나는 거예요. And so for me, um, <웃음> when I was praying, um, how do I say this? It's where I saw like an image of myself, but it was kind of like a clear image before I saw myself. 그러니까 몸 전체가 투명한 유리 유리 모양, 몸이 유리 모양 그런데 그 안에 뭔가 더러운 거, 벌레, 뭐 지렁이, 쓰레기 이런 거 가득 찬 것이 꽉 있는 모습에 내 모습을 딱 보여주는 거라. And so what I saw is, is it was an image of myself, but it was clear. Um, and, and the reason why it was clear is, is I was able to see what was inside, and it was like worms. It was like all these bugs that was inside. I, I can see this all inside of me. 그 보고 뭐 내가 그 순간에 그 보면서 내가 소름이 쫙 끼치면서 깜짝 놀랐어요. And and I was really shocked and surprised. I, I felt like this was an image that I, of myself that I was looking at. 아마 내가 신앙이 어릴 때니까 아마 하나님께서 하도 답답하니까 이렇게 보여주시고 주셨던 것 같아요. And I guess um, God was so frustrated. At, at, and once again, this was at a very early um, stage of my Christian, Christian faith life. And I guess God wanted to show me this in, the, in, in that stage because he was so frustrated. And so um, I was, you know, of course, I was shocked. So I went and asked the pastor about, about what I saw. And I was like, I was praying and then I saw this image of myself while I was praying. It's like, well, what is this? And the pastor said is, you know, you need to repent of your sins. And God was fortunate enough to show you of, of how the sins that you've committed. And, you know, you know after seeing this, I, I, you know, I was so shocked, first of all, and then I was uh, praying before God to ask Him to forgiveness of my sins. <laughs> and then I was like, you know, I'm a fraud, you know, I'm, I'm a fake. And you know, I was, you know, I was doing this for two weeks, and I was trying to think of all the wrong things that I'm doing. You know, there are times I remember, and the, and the things I forgot, but bring back to memory. I was asked for forgiveness, and I was doing this for two weeks, and I stopped asking for forgiveness. And so, doing this after two weeks, um, I guess God showed me the same image again, but this time it seemed. A lot healthier, like this image that God showed me again. And then, you know, uh, I was, I, I guess, you know, I was like, well, what is this? And, um, and I guess God was showing, saying that, you, you know, things are better, is what God was trying to show me. You know, the whole point is that I think that you need to have a true repentance in your life. Acts 2.37, Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Importance when it comes to repentance, you know, this is something that you just know. Um, the one major thing that, that really is important is really a change of, change of heart. And really, it is just change of heart. You know, you, you, there's, there's a turning point of that. And it's really, um, if you have an experience when it comes to repentance, you have this 
quote unquote, cut up the heart, then that's just really an evidence that you have that you are born again, really. If you want to say, how do I know I'm saved? Right, and I think this is one of the perfect examples that you have the heart to change. That this, the, you repent, and you're able to feel it within you. And the, and to give you a an opposite example of what not to do, Esau would be the perfect example. Hebrews 12, 12장 17절 말씀 보게 되면은 너희가 아는 바와 같이 그가 후에 축복을 이어받으려고 눈물 흘리며 구하되. For you know that afterwards, when, when when Esau, you know for afterwards when he wanted to inherit the blessings, he was rejected, where he found no place for repentance, though he sought it diligently with tears. 에서는 이 장작물 뺏기고 난 다음에 그리고 축복을 뺏기고 난 다음에 아버지께 찾아가 가지고 막 얘기를 하는 겁니다. The, the story behind this is Esau lost the blessing of the firstborn, so he he found out he went to his father. Crying because he was not able to get these blessings anymore. 내가 팥죽 한, 한 그릇 때문에 말이지. 내가 이 야곱에게 속아가지고 그 장작권을 내가 팔았습니다. You, you know he was crying. Oh, you know, uh, Jacob, he lied to me or he sold his soup. You know, and, and it's his fault. This is, he's the reason why I cannot receive blessings. So he was furious and he was angry. 이 야곱에게 속아서 지금 <웃음> 여기 그 내가 이 축복을 다 뺏겼습니다. And so because of Jacob, it's Jacob's fault that that. I should be the one receiving blessings, but I cannot. Now, look at what Esau does. He cries. He's emotional. Everything he cries before his father asks him to continue to please bless him. But Jacob said, No, I will not bless you. 오늘 성경에서 말씀하시를 회개할 기회를 얻지 못했다고 얘기하고 있어요. Why did he? Why did Esau not receive blessings? Because in the scripture, Hebrew says, "For he found no place for repentance." 에서는 눈물 흘리면서 아버지에게 찾아갔지만은 하나님께까지 가지를 못했던 거예요. The problem with Esau here is he was crying, he was begging to his father, but the one thing is he never repented. Before God, he never had the place in his heart to repent. 무슨 말씀이냐? 바로 구원과는 상관없다는 걸 나타내고 있는 거예요. And because of the salvation, the lack of salvation that he had. 여러분 요한일서 1장 9절 말씀 보게 되면 만일 우리가 우리의 죄를 자백하면 그는 믿으시고 의로사 우리 죄를 사하시며 우리를 모든 불의에서 깨끗하게 하실 것이라고 말씀하고 있습니다. Uh, John 1, uh, 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and He just forgives us of our sins to cleanse us from the unrighteousness. 여러분, 회개가 무엇이냐 말이야. What is repentance? 회개라는 것은 우리 예수님께서 우리 재상 되시고 우리 재물 대신 예수님께서 우리 문제 해결하시고 부활하셨다는 것을 그 믿는 고백이란 말이야. What you are seeing here is Jesus Christ being the sacrifice, that Jesus Christ was died for our sins. But the important part is after his death, he took all our sins and that he has resurrected. And that is the proof that he is able to forgive our sins because he has resurrected. Our repentance now for us is that Jesus Christ is the true priest, that he was a true sacrifice, who is alive and who is sitting at the right hand of God. That is how we ask and still receive repentance from God. If you do this, then God will give you the blessings. And there are three things that you have to remember. That I think you have to first of all remember the greatest event. Matthew 16, 16. Matthew 16, 16. This is an important and enormous event. The the key to liberation from Satan's sin and God's wrath is to testify that Jesus is the Christ. That 
And, and the second thing is that you know, you have to know that you have this amazing authority. Uh, Mark 3, 13 through 15. Why did God send you? 보내사 전도도 하며 귀신을 내쫓는 권능도 주기 위해서 부르셨다고 얘기하고 있어요. To give you the power and the authority to cast out demons. 우리에게 이미 전도뿐만 아니라 귀신 쫓는 권능도 여러분들 간증 믿습니다. The authority for you that you have is to preach and then also to authority to cast out demons. 우리는 또 최고의 응답을 우리가 누려야 되겠어요. And lastly, you must enjoy the greatest. 에베소 1장 18절입니다. Ephesians 1:18. 너의 마음의 눈을 밝히사 그의 부르심의 소망이 무엇이며 성전 안에서 그의 기업의 영광의 풍성함이 무엇이며 그의 힘의 위력으로 역사심을 얘기 이렇게 얘기하고 있어요. The eyes of understanding being enlightened that you may know that what is hope uh, as, as is calling that the riches of the glories of an inheritance in saints. 하나님의 그 놀라우신 예비하신 축복 기업의 영광 이것을 바로 누려야 되겠습니다. The amazing blessings and the glory, glory which God has prepared for you. 우리가 그리스도인 줄 깨닫게 될때 이런 응답이 나타나게 될줄 믿습니다. We truly enjoy the work of Christ, and these are the blessings that you're able to enjoy. 말씀 드리겠습니다. The conclusion. 사도행전 3장 19절 잡으시기 바랍니다. Verse 3, 19. 그러므로 너희가 회개하고 돌이켜 너희 죄 없이 함을 받으라. 네가 자면 새롭게 되는 날이 주 앞으로부터 이를 것이라. Repent. Therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that the times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. 우리가 주님 앞에 진실된 마음으로 깨끗한 마음을 갖게 해서 주님 앞에 회개하게 되면은 하나님께서 모든 은혜의 문을 열어 주실 믿습니다. If you want God to open His door of grace to you, then you have to be able to come to before God and repent with a pure heart. 자네들 신문공원 세를 누리는 놀라운 축복 역사가 아, 나타나게 될줄 믿습니다. If, if you, you can do this because you have this amazing identity and an authority because you're a child of God. 이 축복 이한 주간에 성취되는 축복 역사가 여러분에게 나타나기를 예수 그리스도 이름으로 축원합니다. We truly enjoy this blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. 기도하겠습니다. Let's pray.